Gormagat Kankarla, and uh, good evening, Minister. And I'd also like to welcome uh, Ambassador Andrisa Jurescu, Ambassador of Ukraine. Your Excellency, you're very welcome to the Chamber. I very much welcome the opportunity just to make some, some brief comments before I head back to committee, just to mark this, this grim and, and grisly second anniversary. Um, I think I remember the day well, 24th of February 2022, I think we all do, um, when Russian armour started to roll into Ukraine. It's amazing, two years have passed and the situation continues, which is a, an absolute travesty, an absolute crime in itself. Um, I guess to start, I just want to reflect on, on Ireland's response. And I think in general terms, Ireland's response has been very good, particularly from a political point of view. Uh, 10 out of 10, absolute support for Ukraine, and rightly so. Um, now Ukraine is a candidate country for EU accession, which is very, very positive. Also from a diplomatic perspective, very positive. From a humanitarian point of view, hugely. Over 100,000 Ukrainians currently residing in Ireland and seeking refuge here. And also from an economic perspective. The sanctions, we rode in behind every sanction. In fact, we were pushing the EU to even do more. Um, and as a result of the, uh, the death of Alexei Navalny, I think we should be looking for more sanctions to absolutely hammer home the message there can be no impunity in relation to what the Russian um, Kremlin is doing currently uh, to its own people. There's room for improvement though. We have given some financial support, 122 million euro pledged so far, which is no small beans for sure, but we do have the opportunity to give more. Um, I also like to welcome the fact that our Defence Force personnel have been directly training Ukrainian armed forces in mine clearance, in combat casualty care and in drill instruction as well. I think that's very, very positive. And I do welcome the bilateral arrangement we had and we do have that Ireland provided body armour uh, and ration packs as well directed to the Ukrainian armed forces. So our response has been good. I think we can do more though. Um, and I guess the, the next question is, where do we go from here? What should we be doing? The European Peace Facility, as I said, over 120 million of Irish euros have been committed, but it's exclusively for non-lethal technology. That makes sense. I prefer to go more, but I, I totally understand the, the consensus uh, in the House. I guess, Minister, what I'm exploring, and I've, I've mentioned to the Taunashta before, a big issue in Ukraine at the moment is air defence, air defence technology. There's a lot of cruise missiles, ballistic missiles, and drones being fired at Kyiv, and they have little or no means to protect themselves. I was over in Kyiv myself for a week before Christmas, and so I know what an air, air defence shelter looks like. The, the difficulty is that we could do more from a non-lethal perspective. If we provide the radars and the air interception technology, all you're doing is shooting down uh, inanimate objects that are flying through the air. So you can't have a lethal effect on something that's not alive in the first place. And, and caveats can be put in place that any technology we provide from an air defense point of view can only be used around Kyiv. Because Ireland does have, um, does have an obligation from a protection of civilians point of view. So that's something we could explore. I uh, certainly would have an open mind on that. In relation to Russian financial assets that have been frozen, and I'm glad to see that Tanisha made a comment uh, in his opening uh, remarks about it, we do have 1.8 billion of Russian assets frozen in the IFSC. I would say don't just freeze, I would say seize as well and put them to good use. We need this money basically to support the war effort in Ukraine, but also to support um, from a reconstruction perspective. I recognize the legal and the monetary complications of it, but I think we can fast track it and, and move things along because the Russian Federation, the Kremlin has seized Irish assets, aircraft in, in Russia, and I think it's high time we should reciprocate at this stage. And I think finally, we should be preparing our own defense forces. Um, there has been a further, incredibly, there's been a further uh, diminution of, of our military capability even in the last two years. We still have naval ships that can't put to sea, aircraft that can't take to the skies, and we have troops that are being withdrawn from Syria in the next few months because we can't maintain the 130 troops out there. So we're at the lowest ebb we've been in over 50 years, and I think that sends out all the wrong signals. Two very, very simple things like sonar technology and radar technology. We're the only EU country without both of those capabilities. And that says a lot about how we value our own sovereignty and our own territorial integrity. So in summary, Kian and Minister, um, I agree that Putin will not stop voluntarily. He must be stopped. There, there was a phrase at the start that we should support Ukraine for as long as we can. 
Uh, it became then that we should support Ukraine um, for as long as it takes. And I think the new phrase should be that we should support Ukraine until victory. Because Ireland has a choice. We can fight Russia indirectly in the Donbass, or we're going to have to fight them here uh, in Dublin. And that's a choice that we shouldn't have to take. So I would say support Ukraine absolutely uh, until victory. Thanks very much, Minister. Thank you, Count.